Next up is My Life as a Book. 12-year-old Derek Bound is looking forward to a summer filled with tossing avocado grenades, smashing action figures under trucks, and climbing onto his garage roof to mess with the satellite dish in his California home. His parents have other plans for him, however, and now he's going to learning day camp for six weeks. Derek is miserable. Well, one day he un uncovers a major distraction in his attic. He finds a 10-year-old newspaper article about the accidental death of a teenage girl on a Martha's Vineyard beach. Though his parents don't want to talk about the event, Derek somehow knows he is connected to this mystery. He sets out to discover who is responsible for the girl's death. Next up is Sylvia and Aki. Aki Munimitsu's life is torn apart. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, she and her family are forced to leave their asparagus farm in Southern California and are relocated to a Japanese internment camp in Poston, Arizona. For years, they are imprisoned in flimsy barracks that keep out neither the summer heat nor the winter chill, and their life is brutally stark. Perhaps what Aki longs for most is her beloved Japanese doll she left hidden in her old room. Sylvia Mendez's life has been torn apart too. Living in the Munsumitsu's house, she expected to go to the excellent local school. Instead, the official deny her entrance, saying she must attend the inferior Mexican school much farther away. In her new room, she finds Aki's doll and wonders about the girl that once played with it. This is a fictionalized account of the events surrounding the Mendez vs. Westminster court case that became a landmark decision leading to school desegregation. We sit in the courtroom and hear the harsh, bigoted explanations from the school officials and learn the reasoning behind the court's decision. In alternating chapters, we follow Aki and Sylvia as both girls deal with family issues, isolation, questions of self-worth, and their own identities as Americans. In the end, our nation is changed forever. Will the two girls who helped bring about that change ever meet? The last nominee is Waiting for the Magic. Once again, fifth grader William's dad walks out on the family, leaving a huge hole in his and his four-year-old sister Eleanor's heart. To fill that hole, their mother takes them to the local animal shelter, where they pick out not one, but four dogs and a cat. They are Biddy, Bryn, Grace, and Neil, and their cat friend Lula. Though Will rightly thinks nothing can replace his dad, their new animal family slowly helps his heartache. Then, something magical happens. One day, Will and Eleanor realize they can hear the dogs talking to one another, and they want to help their new family get back together. However, when their father does come back, will Will, Eleanor, Lula, and the four dogs be enough to convince him to stay this time? For good. Those are the Maud Hart Loveless nominees for Division 1 for 2014-2015. With voting, remember if you want to vote, you need to be in grades 3, 4, or 5 for Division 1, and you have to have read at least three of the books in this division. Voting does take place in March, and the winners are announced on April 25th, which happens to be Maud Hart Loveless's birthday. Which one do you think will win? Read and enjoy and see if you are right.